Reading of SCP-004, The Twelve, Rusty Keys and the Door, Twelve Keys Only One Leads to Salvation. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures, When Handling Items SCP-004-2 Through SCP-004-13, Proper Procedure is Vital. The items are not permitted to be moved off-site unless accompanied by two Level 4 Security Personnel. Under no circumstances should any other component of SCP-004 be taken through SCP-004-1. The effects of doing so are as yet unknown, and the current cost of experimentation makes further research impractical. Should any of the objects contained within SCP-004-1 breach containment, or the facility be breached, the keys must be brought inside and the door closed prior to activation of Site-62's on-site warhead. Unauthorized removal of keys from the testing area is grounds for immediate termination. Level 1 clearance is required for basic access to SCP-004-1, Level 4 clearance is required for use of SCP-004-2-13. Description, SCP-004 consists of an old wooden barn door, SCP-004-1, and a set of 12 rusted steel keys, SCP-004-2 through SCP-004-13. The door itself is the entrance to an abandoned factory in data expunged. Chronological History July 2, 1949, a group of three juveniles trespassing on federal property near find the door. According to their testimony, they found a set of rusted keys in an iron lockbox and determined what door the keys unlock. The juveniles are taken into custody after they contact Sheriff when one of their friends, SCP-004-01, goes missing. July 3, 1949, local authorities find the severed right hand of SCP-004-018 kilometers from SCP-004-1. Other parts of SCP-004-01's body are found scattered as far as 32 kilometers from the factory. Under interrogation, the apprehended juveniles tell authorities that upon opening the door with one of the keys, SCP-004-01 was torn into several pieces, each of which disappeared. At this point, the SCP Foundation takes over the investigation. July 4, 1949, SCP agent obtains the keys from the local authorities to begin testing. Tests show that SCP-004-2 through SCP-004-13 all fit into a single lock on the large barred door. Twelve Class D personnel are assigned to test the effects of the door. Of the twelve test subjects each trying a different key to enter the room, only two survive. Opening the door with any key except SCP-004-7 or SCP-004-12 caused the test subjects to be torn apart in multiple directions, However, no dismembered parts were found until later. At the time of writing, only two parts of each subject have been recovered, with the exception of the subject using SCP-004, whose pieces were scattered in close proximity. The others have, for all intents and purposes, vanished from existence. Of the two surviving subjects, only one, having used SCP-004-7, returned unharmed. The other came back in a near catatonic state, able only to remove himself from the room and then collapse on the floor, and had to be restrained to prevent him from gouging out his eyes. See Appendix A, Mental Health Effects of SCP-004. The subject using SCP-004-7 said that he had entered a large room, impossibly big for the size of the attached building. After his exit, SCP-004-1 was propped open and an armed squad of level 3 personnel entered. The size of the room is impossible to measure and the door frame and the individuals in the room are the only part of the room that can be felt or illuminated. July 16, 1949, the juvenile suspects and sheriff are terminated. August 2, 1949, is declared a hazardous area due to unexploded ordnance and fences erected in order to prevent civilian ingress. Tests to determine safety of exposure to environment behind SCP-004-1 begin. December 1, 1950, 
space-time anomalies resulting from exposure to SCP-004 are confirmed. Testing is suspended until further notice. 07-02-19, the unaccounted for remains of SCP-004-01 appear unexpectedly outside SCP-004-1. Despite being killed decades before, the remains of SCP-004-01 are not decomposed in any manner and are still warm to the touch. Blood remains unoagulated. The remains are remanded for testing. 07-04-19, the unaccounted for remains of one of the 12, 12, original test subjects appear in similar manner to those of SCP-004-01. The remains have been designated SCP-004-02. Records suggest that both SCP-004-01 and K-02 used SCP-004. March 21, 1999, with the massive proliferation of nuclear weapons and World War III only years away, construction has begun on a site inside SCP-004-1. The site is to stock supplies for person days. April 21, 1999, has ordered the site inside SCP-004-1 to be expanded to include emergency storage for all mobile SCP specimens and a petabyte database for the storage of all SCP data. The facility is now referred to as Site-62. September 25, 2000, Site-62 is operational. Labs and containment units are complete and can contain the most dangerous specimens. Backup of the SCP database has begun. Researcher Green, I walked with a team for six weeks while in here, the facility is still being expanding, just how many objects are in here. I feel like this is a new civilization all its own, we have all we need here hell one of the doctors is even trying to commission a golf course in here. January 25, 2001, due to time anomalies, see space time anomalies below. All personnel working at Site-62 are now required to reside on site permanently. Families of personnel are to be informed that loved ones perished in an industrial accident. Cloned bodies have been prepared for funerals as well as documentation and falsified videos of the accidents provided for the family members of the staff for proof. As well as some amnesticized. August 14, 2003 Massive power outage across Northeast United States and through Canada. Due to the initial failure of multiple SCP generators, Site-62 was without power for 53, 53, minutes. During those 53, 53, minutes, those on site were completely without any source of light. They reported sensing creatures and people, although no abnormal entities could be seen or felt. Selected facility personnel were allowed to read, Appendix A, and said the creatures sensed were of humanoid size but otherwise similar to the massive green creature described. Researcher Brown, it felt like I was bumping into people, but they were not making any sounds or had no sensations to them at one time it felt like someone touched my hand and then my hair but then the sensation was gone. Are we sure we are alone here in the darkness in the endless expanse? Or are we feeling the ones that tried to open the doors in the past or something worse? Space-time anomalies SCP-004 seems to propagate spatio-temporal anomalies. Personnel leaving the facility report losing time. Those who have been in the site for weeks insist that they had only been in the facility for several days, and records of work completed and supplies consumed support their claims. Other temporal anomalies involve SCP-004-2-13, especially the reappearance of SCP-004-01 and SCP-004-02 exactly years after using SCP-004. Has been assigned to investigate all aspects of these time anomalies. Spatial anomalies include the impossibly large dimensions of the area opened by SCP-004-7. Similarly, the 2003 blackout incident suggests that there exists an alternate plane of existence within the same space that Site-62 occupies. Additional Notes 
Testing on SCP-004 reveals that 10 of the keys open SCP-004-1 on a dimension where the laws of physics and topology are significantly different than those of our home dimension. Test subjects meeting these hostile conditions are torn apart, their body parts deposited in various locations, only three of which have been verified to be on Earth. Material deposited at two of these points appears immediately, material deposited at the third appears exactly years into the future. The other seven locations are currently unknown. Current testing focuses on two avenues of research. The first is finding ways to survive SCP-004-S hostile topologies. The second data expunged suggests that SCP-004-2-13 may open doors other than SCP-004-1. Appendix A, Mental Health Effects of SCP-004-12 All Class D personnel using SCP-004-12 return in a catatonic state, unable to speak. Some may have enough energy left to try to claw out their eyes. Of the 16 subjects, only four have survived. Only one has regained speech, following long-term psychotherapy. He was able to tell the psychiatrist that he saw a massive green creature, so large that much of its body extended beyond his field of view. He reported innate fear and sudden recognition, as if it were something buried deep in his primal fears, and forced implantation of incomprehensible memories. Subject displays acute anterograde and retrograde amnesia. Appendix B, Additional Information Item Hashtag, SCP-004-14 Date of Discovery, September 2, 1950 Origin of Object, Object was discovered elsewhere in factory area, in the previously undiscovered manager's office. Description, Object appears as a large, unvarnished wooden box. The box may be unlocked by the safe key, SCP-004-7, as well as five of the unsafe keys, see document SCP-004-1. Upon unlocking SCP-004-14 with SCP-004-7, the box opens automatically on hinges. The volume of the space inside is precisely five times greater than the outer dimensions imply. Items placed within while the lid remains open do not affect the weight or any other properties of the box. When the lid is closed and locked, however, all items inside vanish irretrievably. Personnel locked inside the box are also irretrievable, although losing personnel in this fashion appears to affect significantly the dreams experienced by data expunged. Dr. Bright I wonder if we can shrink SCP-682 and put him in the box then close it, this requires further study. Breakdown, there is a barn with 12 keys in a lock box, it's a interesting one, some keys lead you to a hostile area filled with giant green monster-like hulking masses. One allows the SCP Foundation to use the site like an unlimited area of storage, which is amazing in its own right. The bodies that go into the other unsafe doors come back with time, but it looks like they're frozen in time till they arrive back. The crazy thing is, is that going into the twelfth key's door you find yourself surrounded by horrible monsters and are left in a catatonic state after from the sheer horror of the whole ordeal as who knows how long you had to fight to stay alive. With it being turned into a site it gives the SCP Foundation area to store things they never want to get out or anyone in without the key. It's interesting that safe area in it is limitless, just how many SCPs are trapped in there never to see the light of day and what tales will we be leaked from this area, for further study down the road. There is a story of WW3 about to happen in the SCP mythos and that almost limitless supplies are stored here as well all the data of humanity and the foundation is stored here, within a supercomputer to restart the whole process again. If you like this type of content let me know down in the comments, I will be doing them in order and adding more of my personal flair to each of the readings. Let me know which is your favorite and I will be sure to add more to that specific one just for you if it's further down the road.